for Rangers. They hope tonight, then the first old firm meeting of the season at Celtic on Saturday. And then they hope, as I say, away again next week for the winners of Hamilton against Parts in a Skull Cup quarter-final. But to earn that, they have to do the business here at Firhill. Rangers to kick off, defending the goal to the right in the first half. And Partick Thistle certain to go in and challenge for everything. And as John Lambie said earlier, to try to take the game to Rangers if they can. Attack is the philosophy. They've made a good start in Scotland's first division, the division below the Premier League. And indeed have won their last four matches without conceding a goal. Peter Halstra, who's got a good chance now to establish himself at the departure of Mark Walters. It's Graham Robertson examining Andy Gorham early on, and Gorham coming through that test with flying colours. Simon Stain, Rob, that's just what you want to see your goalkeeper do in circumstances like this. Well, that's going to give their defence tremendous confidence to see Gorham coming out and taking that. That's uh, a fine piece of goalkeeping. just guiding it off to Halstra and a handball spotted by Jules Smith quickly taken free kick by Duffy Sammy Johnston laying it wide to Shaw who will operate wide on the right of four in midfield Roberts on the right back and Flashen and McWalter the two strikers in Halstra in the way the solid figure of Gordon Ray here's McCall Gary Stevens at right back for Rangers Durant going down the touchline and offering his support to Stevens here's Nisbet Nigel Spackman wearing five. But Rangers already quite clearly have two problems. The tigerish tackle, tackling of Thistle and the length of the grass that we've spoken about deliberately kept long by the ground staff here. And it's not going to suit initially the passing game. And a lecture for Sammy Johnston. Oh, it's just a, a late clumsy tattle, that's all. I don't think there's any animosity in that. Morris Johnston. That one first for this one. David Robertson, whose fee was ruled by a tribunal to be almost a million pounds from Aberdeen. Halstra going on. Morris Johnston. a reasonable chance Mo Johnston who left here for Watford to start his wandering around the highways and byways of the footballing world made off by Durant Gary Stevens who started the season so well and will hope to be in the England squad for the forthcoming international against Germany a match that you can see live here on Sky Sports Got but his central defensive partner and Jim Duffy who was voted back in the mid 80s Scotland players player of the year a great honour when he was with Morton he's a footballer of high calibre and Rangers have plenty of those as well but two of them Goff and Nisbet almost confusing each other then Gorham hasn't quite got his geometry right of 
this particular ground as he kicks the ball straight out of play. He wasn't best pleased with that. It really is going to be tigerish in midfield. On a very pleasant evening weather-wise. Nisbet takes the free kick. That's by McLaughlin for Thistle. It's the third round of the Skull Cup, the League Cup competition in Scotland. And little Spencer, not likely to win in the air, but he has other qualities. A bubbly character. Backman. Helped out by Stevens. Spencer turns well, but the ball runs away from him. And is collected by Duffy, who waves his teammates forward, McWalter in particular. David Robertson. Well, it was a clever dummy by Johnston, but Duffy had spotted it. Short, forced the infield and not getting very far. Here's McGlashan. And, uh, Barnum looking to make his mark. It's a good piece of football, actually. Father comes onto the ball and takes his chance quite well, but didn't bother Gorham too much. plays wide on the left, but Hardik this on that occasion getting it wrong in midfield. And Rangers not able to take advantage of it. Simon, you've had plenty of moves. Ray Farningham, it's a, a quick switch of colours. Well, he's going to settle in quite quickly. Well, he's settling quickly. I mean, the pace of the game you're bound to, really. I mean, it, you're bound to be involved. I mean, but it's very frenetic. And a little foolish from John Spencer in a season where deliberate handball is going to be under scrutiny. It was McCall's pass. What uh, have they said to you at Falkirk about handball this season? Well, if, if we do make any stupid handballs, then we're fine for it. And, uh, I mean, apart from that, the referees take, take care of it. I mean, we quite often get bookings and anything which threatens the goal, it's, it's an immediate sending off, so you have to be very careful. George Smith taking uh, a sympathetic view to John Spencer a moment or two ago. Andy Gorham very much at this stage of his career. Scotland's number one goalkeeper as well. Here's Houster, the Dutchman. Trying to get away from Graham Robertson. Not quite getting his bearings right with Johnston. Well, the ball didn't actually go into the Rangers' half, but McWalter had gone offside. McGlashan was in his own territory and clearly uh, in a legitimate position. Spackman. Partick Thistle here, trying to bridge a considerable gap in league status. And, uh, with the greatest respect for their own players in quality as well. This is the raw appeal of cup tie football. Pistol taking on the holders of the Skull Cup and making a good fist of it at this stage. And Gorham called in again by uh, Johnston, Sammy Johnston. Oh, it's, it's good football actually. As the ball's played in, he just gets a, a quick snapshot off there. Well covered again by Gorham. I don't think shots like that are going to trouble Gorham tonight. Back from McLaughlin. Put out by Nisbet. Here's David Irons, played plenty of Premier League football earlier in his career. 
as has Mark McWalter, but he can't force a corner. David Murray, the Rangers chairman, is sitting down in the dugout. Coming up to ten minutes gone. And at Fur Hill, it's Paddock Thistle nil, Rangers nil. Now Nisbet. David Robertson from left back trying to supply some movement here. There's a little static elsewhere. Spencer. Duffy close to him, but Spencer almost threading it inside Robertson. Tenacious enough to get the ball back for Rangers. But Jim Duffy, whose career was almost ended by injury a few years ago, he took the insurance money and then happily, from his point of view, had to pay it back because uh, his damaged right knee responded to treatment. It's a wonderful story, really. And he's marshalling his side, player coach, convincingly so far. The header from Nisbet. Duffy beating Spencer. On from Johnston. Farningham, his ally in the centre of midfield. Sort of tugging there on Halstra and Robertson trying to play it safe, but Simon, I must say, it doesn't look a passing pitch by uh, any means. No, as I said before, I think the long grass is uh, it's probably a little bit of a tactic on Partick's part, and it's, it's certainly holding their passing game back. Tongue in cheek, they were saying, well, it's a new pitch and you have to let the grass grow, but. Uh, I think uh, if you ask them straight up, they'd realise, uh, they'd, they'd admit to the fact that it is a tactic to try and stop Rangers settling to the style of football that absolutely demolished Dunfermline at Ibrox on uh, a really pure surface on Saturday. Jim Lambie has spoken to Ian Munro, the Dunfermline manager, about any lessons learned from that. Could be free to practice tonight. And Nisbet is surely going to be singled out here. I don't think this season there's any doubt if a player gets brought down like that on way to goal, he's going to get booked. And he, quite rightly so, really. I mean, the boy was by him. So, a yellow card for Rangers. Could it lead to a chance here for Partick Thistle? 13 minutes played. 0-0 at Firhill. Gordon Ray's well forward. McLaughlin, who uh, really has got a strong left foot. We might see a shot or two from him at goal from the 25-30 yard mark as the game develops. He couldn't quite operate the free kick as Thistle would have required then. Here he is. Had a few games for Celtic in the first team last season. Robertson his opposite number tonight. Here's Gordon Ray, pressed by Halstra, giving the ball to Mo Johnston. It hits Duffy, but there was an offside. Gordon Ray, Simon, somebody you know pretty well. Well, he's uh, quite a close neighbour of mine, and uh, both members at the same golf club, so... And <laughs> apart from that, I played against him about five times last season, and uh, I think I'm still wearing his shirt. I think he hits a golf ball a fair way, looking at the uh, upper body there. He hits anything a long way, including <laughs> centre forwards. <laughs> I'm sure you stood your ground. Here's Gary Stevens. Johnson wanting the ball played short to feet, but it's not coming. Rangers in the end lofting it through Nisbet. Met by McLaughlin. Nisbet can try again. We've got the help from Richard Goff. Nisbet confident on the ball. And here's Goff. Rangers must feel that if they can grab a goal here, it would take some of the uh, early uh, fight out of Thistle. 
the call. It's lovely football, this. Robertson just seemed a little unsure as what was best to do. In there, supporting the strikers. And the most promising position for Rangers has ended rather tamely. It's a goal kick. Party Kissel came through their second round tie at the expense of Albion Rovers. 2 0. That's a push by Walter. I spoke to Walter Smith, the Rangers manager, this morning about possibly one player who might cause him a problem. He mentioned Mark McWalter. To, uh, the pace that he has but we haven't seen any real flash of it so far McWolf for the number 10 for Patrick Pistol Duffy again reading the game superbly McLaughlin Bill Smith once more quick to give the free kick although Carter could retain possession Harry Stevens was in just too rudely for the referee's liking will tell you that this could be uh, Rangers' night in a straightforward fashion. Looking down from our commentary position at the mass ranks of the uh, Partick followers, I'm sure you get a different opinion down there. Hope springs eternal, and so far, with just over 15 minutes gone, this all giving a good account of themselves, and Rangers haven't really settled. Here's Shaw. Farningham going ahead of him. And... Uh, combination of Robertson and Goff doing the tackling to give Party Pistol the throw. Robertson made back to him by McGlashan. Fast his tackle. The Rangers really have made this particular competition their own over the past five years in the final every one of those years a no problem here though cleared away by Goff McLaughlin with that left foot I was talking about a minute or two ago it's a light tackle by uh, Farnham Finding him very late there, very late. Away by McLaughlin, and then they're flashing forward this time. Partick Thistle have won this trophy, a famous victory at that, almost 20 years ago now, and they uh, trounced Celtic 4-1. page or two of its own in the history of this competition Spencer taking on Duffy brought out by Irons he gives nice balance on the left and Walter trying to get up ahead of steam but he showed too much of the ball to Nisbet in by Robertson David Robertson that was but only straight to uh, Graham Robertson no relation but, uh, a Robertson on each side a Johnston on each side Spencer is onside Durant getting into the centre no Johnston there as well and both of the supporting players were angry with Spencer then who wasted a very promising position Pitcher told the story, but Andy Murdoch did his part for Partick Thistle. But it just seemed that, that the options were there for Spencer. Halstra, again Duffy, with a timely contribution, but Halstra can get it back again. 
Duffy once more. McCall. Well, Spencer given plenty of time to shoot. Partick Thistle really for the first time very slow to close down an opponent. Spencer, very unlucky really. Should have had a should have got it on target though, yeah. Header from Nisbet. Spencer chasing. Gordon McQueen in our studio. How do you feel the match is developing so far? Well, I think I may have underestimated Party Thistle a little bit because they've started the game very brightly and tactically I think they've got it right. They're pushing the two wide men out onto Robertson and, and Gary Stevens and leaving Scott Nisbet and Richard Goff with the ball. And they're really not getting anywhere with that. But John Lamblin must be delighted with the start. They're defending well and looking, and looking right up front as well. Stevens. Here's McLaughlin. McWalt is showing. And uh, McLaughlin is there as well. Irons. Well, he took some stopping. Shaw coming into the centre and uh, trying to sneak in on the blind side. In fact, the cross from Colin McGlashan was too close to Andy Gorham. Header from Ray. And McWater was uh, a judge there to challenged unfairly. It's the type of decision that does frustrate forwards. And Duffy has been very influential, keeping Rangers at play. Irons, and a four up for Partick here. David Irons on the ball. And here's a Farnham. Well, there were real possibilities there. They'd outnumbered Rangers, son. Well, they pushed forward very quickly there. A good ball from David Irons. Uh, Barningham again getting the shot in. Uh, good effort, but maybe should have hit the target, I think. Ray making it solidly. Walter Smith, we saw, looking anxious down on the Rangers bench. And David Livingston, our reporter, is down there. David, what's the atmosphere like? Well, Martin, uh, Walter has come down, as you say, looking anxious. David Dodds has been shouting continuously at uh, Morris Johnston and John Spencer to maintain contact with midfield and prevent that gap opening up. And obviously, Walter has come down to reinforce that. Robertson stopped, uh, as Gordon McQueen was saying, by... Uh, George Shaw and it's with Goff and Nisbet with the ball and with the onus to try and create the momentum for Rangers in an attacking sense. Here's Durant. So good to see him back. McLaughlin above Mo Johnston who was pushing in any case. But on the subject of Ian Durant, I think Rangers feel that we shouldn't expect too much too soon. They, uh, of course, feel he's fit enough to be playing at this level of the game. But his injury was of the most serious kind. But look at him now, breaking forward with Mo Johnston outside him. He might reach it. But who was there? It was Duffy again. Great break again from Durant here. He, he plays a good ball to Maurice Johnson and just holds up on the grass. And Jim Duffy does well to get across and force it away from a corner. A corner to Rangers. Just over 20 minutes to go to half time. And it was Mark Walton meeting it but not clearing it. Robertson heads it back. Here's Ian Durant. 
to go. Halstra. A flick from Maurice Johnston, David Robertson, and well saved by Murdoch. Very good skill here. Takes the ball on the chest, Robertson. Flashes the shot across goal. It's a tremendous save from Murdoch. Great save. Rangers try again with another corner. Halstra, who crossed in the first place, it's a terrifically aware flick by Mo Johnston to set up that chance, which I'm sure, Simon, you appreciated, the sort of thing that uh, you do naturally. Well, <laughs> it was a great flick from Mo, but uh, I thought the control from Robertson and the shot you know, for a fullback I mean, uh, shows great uh, potential. Andy Murdoch, only 23. Plus the more than £100,000 from Celtic and showing his value. He's previously been here on loan on a couple of occasions. Barnigan. Here's Irons. McLaughlin involving himself. McGlashan. Well cut out by Paul McLaughlin. There really is a sense of ambition about Partick Thistle these days. Uh, obviously uh, gearing it all, hoping that John Lambie can steer the team to the uh, Premier League next season. Upside against McWalter. The board have given the manager money to invest on the playing side. The new floodlights are up. Of a very high quality. That's handballed by Stuart McCall. Free kick taken quickly. Sammy Johnson in too much of a hurry. Halstrup. He can't get very far. Shaw. Graham Robertson. That's a sweet turn from McGlashan. Rangers recognise the threat. It isn't easy to wait those sort of passes on this surface. But both sides looking to uh, pass the ball and play rather than just hit it and hope. To some extent, it's making it difficult for this well grass pitch for Partick Thistle as well. But there are more pluses for them than there are for Rangers. David Robertson, who was in the last side to beat Rangers in a Skull Cup tie, that was the uh, final itself a couple of years ago. Uh, Aberdeen, of course. Backman. Spencer, it's a fine leap for a little fellow. And for once, Duffy uh, couldn't defuse the situation. Spencer won the ball there very well. Very well indeed. Great ball in and a great leap from Spencer. But the goalkeeper covered it easily. And uh, Nisbet just stopping McGlashan. And you could uh, hear the roar forming in the throats of the Partick partisan. And I thought McGlashan, their leading scorer, might be in for another chance. Duffy in the way again. I remind you that although Partick Thistle lost on the opening day of the season away to Morton, they haven't conceded a goal since in four games. Four games and almost half an hour. Spencer. John Spencer being given the opportunity by Walker Smith rather than just coming in as a stand-in to really stake a claim while uh, Mark Hatley's had this shoulder problem. It's going to be a long throw from Gary Stevens. Well, it's an appeal that the two party players who went for the ball together kind of confused each other sufficiently for a hand to be used, but George Smith saw nothing wrong. 
Back to Gorham from Halstra. Irons. Laid back by Walter. Offside. Barningham had gone. You could say too soon, but in fact the ball possibly from his point of view came a bit late. It was an imaginative break from Ray Farningham. Rangers didn't expect an easy ride here, and that's the way it's turning out. Spencer, but a goal would relax them. Stevens. Now Spackman. Full uh, bypass. As Rangers keep the ball in this area, Spencer and Johnston moving around up front to try and make the pass possible, and David Robertson as well. Unsuccessfully, but he's shown plenty of imagination from left back already. And very nearly contributed an opening goal and would have done but for Andy Murdoch's fine save. Well, it may only be 14,000, but it sounds like 40,000. This Glasgow derby in the context of the third round of the Skull Cup. No foul by Halfter. Patrick Thistle. Stopped expecting the whistle, but only for a moment. Robertson. Here's Shaw. Robertson again. There's no offside against McGlashan. And it's led to a part of Thistle throw. It was a thoughtful ball to uh, McGlashan from Farningham. And Rangers were just guilty of ball watching for a moment. And this uh, diminutive forward take up a position which was threatening. <laughs> it's nil-nil. There are 12 minutes to go to half-time. There has to be a result tonight, even if it involves extra time, even if it involves penalties. Here's Spencer. And Fulton couldn't prevent the shot. But he's a confident young man, John Spencer. Full of spirit, Spencer, and he, uh, every chance he gets, he gets a shot in at goal. Uh, that's the way that strikers get their goals, you know, taking a chance and, and just taking it on. I like his attitude, Simon. He was quoted in the press up here as uh, being asked about what it's like to play with the big names. He said the only big name we've got is Mikhailichenko. <laughs> no, he's a very sharp, very bubbly character, and he's, he's doing very well so far in this game. showing uh, that Rangers have come here to scrap it out to earn the right to impose their quality but they have that it's without question but Partick at the moment preventing the showing of it so that's Durant for Stevens and Mo Johnston 1-0 Rangers he's come back to his first club with a goal and on that occasion the class did shine through The pass through from Durant was absolutely superb. Great cutback from Gary Stevens and the finish from Johnston, oh, perfect. Tremendous goal from Rangers. Super goal. And Ian Durant at the heart of it with the pass that Gary Stevens met first time. So too did Johnston and the sheer speed of the move, bringing Mo his eighth goal of the season and preventing Partick finding a solution.
and the only consolation for the home side is that they're a goal down to uh, a very well worked move rounded off by a striker that they brought into the game themselves yes their first away goal this season it's only their second match having lost 1-0 to Hearts and uh, having found uh, a real festival of goals at Ibrox 18 in uh, four wins there without reply and Walter Smith will be more relaxed now marginally will be reaching Graham Taylor but uh, the player on the ball here has made an outstanding start for this particular season and how well he uh, delivered the chance that Johnston took Spackman Patrick Thistle really will just have to ride the blow and maintain their level of commitment. They would have been reasonably pleased with the way they were performing up to that point. Halster. Here's Robertson. Ray. Decisive. And off the head of Mo Johnston. And an offside given against David Robertson. George Smith was the referee who represented Scotland in the uh, 1990 World Cup finals in Italy. beaten by Nisbet Nisbet again the uh, next round of the competition the quarterfinals played next week we'll have a match live for you on Sky Sports then there will be the semi-finals at the end of September the final on the last Sunday in October I do think that's an excellent format, which they could copy in England, where the League Cup gets mixed up with the FA Cup and loses some of its identity. The uh, two finals in England, very close to each other at Wembley, towards the end of the season. All credit to the administration in Scottish football. Stephen. Now Nisbet, Rangers leading by a Mo Johnson goal, a goal very much delivered in his predatory style. Here's Farningham, and he's aiming for McGlashan, who had to time his run to try and stay onside. Done that, but the ball didn't get past golf. Short. Sure. 
Simon, how much of a blow do you think that will be to Thistle's morale to lose a goal, even though it was <laughs> one that you could excuse conceding? Well, obviously, it's a blow, but I mean, they were doing pretty well up till then. You know, they were competing quite equally with Rangers, and uh, I think they've got to keep battling away and just see if they can, if they carry on playing, then they'll get a chance. And it's just taking that chance when it comes along. McLashan complaining about a free kick given against him. He is one of those smaller strikers that the uh, tall centre backs find almost like an insect buzzing around them. They don't uh, collide shoulder to shoulder. And the challenges often look untidy. On that occasion, it looked untidy against McLashan. Irons not getting much change out of Stevens. Here's Spencer. So again, if that's a failing, it's overconfidence, really. He conceded the throw, but I'm sure it won't mean his chin will go on his chest. Nicely done by Nisbet. And he's spent right with him. Which is why he really had to check. Rangers can afford to do that in this position. Stevens. Across from Durant. And uh, I think Spatman will be disappointed then that Johnston wasn't in the penalty area. He was rather admiring the cross rather than uh, hunting another goal. Limbering up both of their substitutes, Ian Ferguson and Ali McCoy. And Duffy uh, going for that. Murdoch gets there in the end, but not decisively. And uh, there was confusion on a couple of occasions between uh, the player coach and the goalkeeper then. And Rangers very nearly cashed in. They have a corner. A bit of confusion in defence there again. And uh, Spence is so quick to get onto the ball. I mean, he really is a little whippet in there. And that is Murdoch's fault. It was delivered from the far side with plenty of pace by Ian Durant. Just at the moment, the midfield players have stopped making the runs to support McWalter and McLashen. They were doing that well in the earlier phases of the game. The uh, two front men for Patrick Thistle momentarily, uh, they hope, feeling a bit isolated with a couple of minutes to go to half-time. Making up ground on Duffy. And John Spencer with an overshow of enthusiasm more than anything of a malicious nature. Now, all the time Spencer's trying to put defenders under pressure. He's very, very sharp and very aggressive with it. I like him. He's a good player. You can understand Duffy's reaction also, though, having had that uh, career finishing injury, or so it seemed. Determined defending by Graham Robertson, roundly applauded not just by the supporters but by uh, his colleagues. <laughs> Duffy. Now McCotter. And Lashen showing for the ball. Played just like that. The target pistol throw, or is it? No. Well, Rangers, without uh, 
needing too much in the way of athleticism from Andy Gorham. Just a couple of fairly straightforward saves early in the half. Rangers threw some of the sting out of Partick Thistle over the opening half an hour. And then uh, dropped themselves. Here's McLaughlin. We're into stoppage time at the end of the first 45. Again, confident defending from Graham Robertson. One of a number of players who came here from Dunfermline. Harry Stevens, who is so quick when he needs to pull out that extra speed. Easily winning that little sprint with McLashen. George Smith has another look at the watch. Sure. Dragging aside Halstra. Well, Cardiff Pistol might be uh, running out of time before half time. They have to throw. But there's not time to take it. So there have been thrills at Fur Hill, but not the sort that Cardiff Pistol fans really wanted. They've certainly seen their team give a good account of themselves, but it's their former favourite. Mo Johnston, who scored the only goal of the half, really taking a liking to this competition, adding to the four that he got last week at the expense of Queen's Park. And Rangers, in difficult circumstances here, will be pleased, I think, with the... On the left. This old pitch. Oh, it was superb play. Barry Thistle start the second half, a goal down. Durant, every game, there's another bridge built on the road to full recovery. Durant just waiting for Goff to arrive. But Duffy dealt with it. Gary Stevens, I think, wanted to let the ball run and then realised that it wouldn't. Free header for Gordon Ray. Had so many good years with Hibernian. Irons. Understanding uh, with Farningham. That came from their previous club. Well, David Livingston has been talking to John Lambie, the party pistol manager. David, what's the view from the party camp? Martin, I've just talked to John Lambie. He says he was a very angry man at uh, half-time in the dressing room. He said they lost the goal by ball-watching. He's told his players there's only one goal in it. They have to attack, and if there's not an improvement quickly, he'll be making changes. Well, he's a manager who doesn't mince his words. He had some strong things to say after the win here on Saturday against Sterling Albion when a substitute... Isaac English, who's one of the two substitutes tonight, came on and got a crucial goal. Maybe he is the, the young man for this occasion, 19-year-old. And it's a free kick to Patrick Thistle here. Shaw, Robertson's cross. Andy Gorham wasn't distracted. Got a good pair of hands, of course, because he's a double international uh, Scotland cricketer as well as a Scotland goalkeeper. But the secondary sport has to, uh, I'm afraid now, go to the back burner because uh, Rangers have banned him playing cricket. Want to protect their expensive investment, understandably. Wide from McCall to David Robertson, well forward as he was so often in the first half. Johnston. 
after all, he's so good at winning the ball back. And Durant couldn't quite reach it. And Irons gets the better of Stevens. A chance for a part of counter-attack here. McGlashan, a lovely turn past Nisbet. Here's Mark McWalter. Can he land it up? He can do! And Andy Gorham really at full stretch. It was the fingertips that forced the ball outside the post rather than, as Mark McWalter hoped, inside it. Great break again from Partick Thistle here. McWalter very unlucky not to score. Good save from Gorham. That really was the moment of greatest menace to the Rangers' goals so far. Stephen steers the corner away. Retrieved by Graham Robertson, skillfully. Oh, and well, Sammy Johnston was coming in then. Gorham realised he wasn't going to reach it. But Mark McWalter, who found time there at the end of a flowing Partick Thistle piece of football to really line up the shot and take aim for the far corner, only to find Gorham really flinging himself to his left. Here's Halstra. The one thing Partick cannot afford is to concede a second goal. The Rangers might feel it on the cards here. And Paul and Stevens is offside. So a pulsating start to uh, a hugely enjoyable uh, cup tie, a pulsating start to the second half. Three up for Partick Thistle. Spackman. Very much in the engine room for Rangers. Nisbet. Here's Durant. Well, that's that sort of uh, mobility from McGlashan that made the chance for McWalter a moment or two ago. And Partick Thistle doing their best to respond to the lambasting they got from John Lambie at half-time. Spencer skipping out of the way of Ray, wisely. Durant trying to drill the ball at John Spencer, and he's gone offside. himself there's George Shaw McWalter Farningham and now Sammy Johnston McLaughlin almost within range for his feared left foot which he uses to deliver the cross and Andy Gorham not only claims it quickly, but uses it quickly as well. Not quite as accurately as he would have hoped. Sure. Oh, Robertson, a very difficult opponent. A crowd of 12,500. Lashen, neat and tidy again. McLaughlin. And Durant, given a sight of the ball then. But the throw has gone part its way. McLaughlin, while it's 1-0, the margin of Rangers' current lead, part it will still feel there's plenty left in this match for them. And 
some uh, shirt tugging by Irons. Simon, it does feel like a key phase of the game, this, if Partick can break through. Well, Partick have started the same way they started the first half. You know, you often do that when you come out from the dressing room. Uh, Rangers are weathering it. Uh, I'm sure that Rangers will build on this and, and maybe go up there and get another goal soon. But having said that, uh, certainly Gorham's had to make his most difficult save. Well, yes, yes. Nisbet. Duffy so much. Through Patrick Pistol defensively. Irons. Off goes McWalter. Goff's in control. I remember when Andy Gorham uh, came into football in England, the uh, feeling was that he was on the short side. And that hasn't been a major handicap for him. And, uh, that's, uh, frame has certainly got a natural spring as we saw in that save his father of course was a professional goalkeeper as well so it's certainly in the blood Spencer now Johnston Spackman McCall Definitely blocked it, and Spackman couldn't contrive a pass of any penetration then. from the free kick to Robertson. Oh, it's a fine try! Oh. David Robertson can scarcely believe it. And Andy Murdoch, who played so well, seemed to be rooted to the spot, though whether he didn't see it, only he can tell us. On his right foot... It's a tremendous strike, Martin. Tremendous finish from a fullback. <laughs> and in keeping with the attacking play that uh, David Robertson has been offering, really, right from the first whistle. And it came past a couple of players and was hit so well that although Murdoch had only a yard or so to move to cover his near post, he couldn't do it. A first goal for Rangers and one that he'll never forget. Stainrod gets the award for the best prediction of the night, saying Rangers would go upfield and score again. They've done just that, but even you, Simon, I don't think would have expected it to come that way. Well, it was a, a tremendous goal. What he can really be proud of. Super finish. McCall having trouble with the pitch. Here's Short. So... Coming ten minutes into the second half, Partick Thistle nil, Rangers two, and even before David Robertson struck, Ian Ferguson was getting ready to come on. There is an old firm game on Saturdays. Yeah, I'm sure you don't need any reminding of that. And possibly with that in mind, Gary Stevens goes off. Now this will necessitate a certain amount of reshuffling. It looks as though uh, Scott Nisbet is going to right back. Nigel Spackman is going to play in the centre of defence alongside Richard Goff and Ferguson will play in his preferred position of midfield. Here goes McWhorter. 
Graham Robertson's cross. David Irons trying to reach it. McLaughlin, Irons caught slightly wrong-footed, but he made light of that against McCall. He got back, played the ball, no foul. The angle of the challenge that upset the Pound of Crystal supporters. The ball with the referee was played cleanly enough. Ferguson anxious to uh, be part of the plot here straight away. Spackman no stranger to this particular job. And Rangers have the two-goal cushion to give him a reasonably relaxing position to take up. Spackman. Here's Johnston. Well, Scott Nisbet is at right back, and news of Gary Stevens comes from the touchline with David Livingston. Martin, Gary Stevens has something wrong with his left foot. He's taken his boot off, and obviously, as a precautionary measure, with the Old Firm match coming up on Saturday, they've uh, taken him off, and they have some ice down there which they're going to apply to that foot. Well, he doesn't look too concerned about it. Or maybe Ali McCoy's told him one of his uh, legendary jokes. McCoy, of course, bursting to be uh, part of this match as well. Came on and scored as a substitute against Dunfermline on Saturday. And also got a goal in a reserve match on Monday night. The touch hasn't deserted him. Call from Durant, but he didn't uh, seem to be on that particular track. Johnson again. And once more, it's David Robertson. Spencer, the one for him. Well, he can console himself, but he keeps getting into the scoring positions. Oh, it's a great ball again, over the top from Johnson. Robertson on the run, cuts the ball back to Spencer. And Spencer, I think he should have driven this. He tried to curl it in the far corner. Should have hit it. Farningham and Johnston combining in midfield. <laughs> Duffy. <laughs> Offside. Simon, you've been quietly purring here about David Robertson's performance and uh, it was another bold break from him again. Yeah, well, he's, he's a class player. I think that uh, Rangers were a bit upset at the tribunal if we had to pay for him uh, to, have, to have it in. On tonight's performance and on Saturday's performance, it looks worth every penny and more. You know, he's a class player. Well, here's another youngster. It's Isaac English replacing Mark McWalter. English, as I said earlier, came from the bench and scored the winner here on Saturday in the first division fixture against Sterling Albion. So he will partner McLashen up front. Got it. We're 17 minutes into the second half at Firhill. Part of Thistle, nil. Rangers two, goals from Mo Johnston and David Robertson. Each in their own way, spectacular. And uh, but for Murdoch, Spencer would have had a third. Good ball in from Ferguson to, to feet to Spencer, and a great turn and a great shot. Good save as well. It's quality football. 
produced this corner for Rangers. Halstrup. Trying to make the best possible angle for himself, but it's a goal kick. Johnson. Oh, sure, hasn't had too much chance to uh, get forward and show his own attacking capabilities on the right for Parik Thistle. He's been chasing David Robertson for much of the match. It's back. The call. The Rangers certainly going to need their all the pool of players over this long and demanding season so many extra league games real hopes for the european cup the domestic cup competitions as well and so many of them will uh, obviously be called upon for international matches also and there's isaac english into the game really for the first time and finding out all about the tenacity of mccall Partick Thistle have lost a bit of their shape at the moment. Ferguson Johnson's offside. The home players have put so much into their difficult task tonight. And understandably, Rangers having ridden the storm. They're in a position here to capitalise on the gaps that will uh, probably open up. Partick Thistle nil, Rangers 2, 20 minutes played in the second half at Fur Hill. Spackman. Turning it over, Graham Robertson's head and the conditions very nearly helping Rangers again. In that the ball uh, on most pitches wouldn't have held up for Hastra to have an earthly chance of getting it, but he very nearly kept the ball in play. Jim Lambie feels that the Partick Thistle fans haven't seen his team play to full potential at all yet this season. Their best moments of the match here. They've produced a goal to stretch Rangers, who have Haustra nimbly creating another chance. Oh, almost doing that, it's a corner. I think House is starting to really come on to his game now and he's enjoying this game. If he cut this back to Johnston, I'm sure Johnston would have scored. So it's a corner. Richard Goff waits on the edge of the area. And the ball's come all the way across to who else but David Robertson. In goes Goff and Johnston and it's another corner. Good effort from Goff. He leaps like a gazelle there to get that one back on goal. He stayed forward. And you do feel that Rangers could pick off another one here. Spencer, first to it. So Robertson again, <laughs> staying on the right here. He's got the taste. And 
Harding Thistle at the moment, penned into their own penalty area. And goes Goff. No clean contact this time. Followed away by Duffy. Laid off well by English. Shaw looking to unsettle Ferguson, but unsuccessful. Rangers really in a position now to put on something of an exhibition, but they've worked hard for the right to do that. For half an hour, it was a difficult cup tie. And Johnston struck, and the second goal from David Robertson has really confirmed the superiority. Spencer. <laughs> Duffy... Uh, Hitting Spencer, I think that the ball was going to run. It would have been a corner if it had done, and he knew what he was doing, Jim Duffy. Not for the first time tonight. Ray Farningham three or four times tonight has uh, challenged Andy Gorham. It's a, it's a fair effort for Farningham, but Gorham's never in trouble, really. Astro wins it back. Graham Robertson. Here's English against Spackman. And the goal kick. Just uh, fleeting hope there for Patrick Thistle that the officials, linesman and referee might agree on possible penalty here, but English looks, was happy to go down. Looks a goal kick to me, that. <laughs> You'd have been appealing if you'd have been Isaac King. I would have got a penalty for that. <laughs> this might be a good time for Ali McCoy to come on. With 20 minutes to go and the opportunity to catch Patrick Thistle when they're tiring. Or are they tiring? Maybe they're not. The vigilance of McCall there. Farningham have made another intelligent break. What does impress me, Simon, you talked about the fiery nature of Scottish football, and there's plenty of that, of course, but Walter Smith has put his faith in skill in this particular lineup. Well, if you look at the front three, you've got to play the ball at your feet, haven't you? And, and that's what they rely on. And it, it, work very hard to make the space and to get the ball into feet and support from midfield. They're, they're a very, very good side. They're, they're like, they remind me of a Liverpool machine in many ways. English is away. He hasn't got much help up with him. And Goff needed all his know-how there. As Isaac English darted in behind him. Goff complaining he wasn't told about the danger. And Partick really with nothing to lose in this position now. They've just got to uh, gamble and hope that they might get one goal back and prey then on any Rangers' nerves. Ferguson wanting a bit too much time, but he dealt with it in the end. Spencer losing out. Here's Irons. Plenty of players forward for Paddock here. And Irons takes them all off. And Gorham's out quickly. English has got a goal that looked unattended. Now who stopped that with what? Gorham taking issue with uh, McGlashan. Great from Davy Irons there, bursting through 
And Goran, brave as a lion. And then second time, fantastic reflex save. The first save at the feet of McLashan was what Goran was angry about, feeling that the studs were shown. McLashan surely entitled to go for the ball in those circumstances. Well, as a striker, Martin, I think you should go for it. Goalkeepers are too soft these days. But Andy Gorham uh, was hard enough to get up and block the follow-up from Isaac English. And once the danger was over, the finger-wagging was directed at Colin McGlashan. We've got a sight of the number 14. The Rangers on the far side, Alan McCoy. He's uh, ready and laughing and joking, as you'd expect, but he's got to sit down for the moment. Goff. Possibly a little bit of complacency creeping into the Rangers game. Feeling that they've done the hard work, but it's still 16 minutes to go. Irons. He certainly wasn't settling for defeat with that uh, burst that he made. But very nearly put a breakthrough for Partick. <laughs> the uh, hubbub came from the crowd and not any appealing players. English has given a different dimension here. He's a dive. By uh, Johnston. Johnston. George Smith was having nothing to do with it whatsoever. Substitute's doing well, Simon. Yeah, substitute's got a bit of pace and he, uh, he certainly puts, uh, puts the backs under pressure. I think the referee's probably right on that occasion. His team just taken their foot off the accelerator. Partick playing with bags of pride here. Whatever happens in terms of the results, they want a performance to act as an impetus over the league programme as well. Certainly be a team you'd look at as promotion candidates as they were last season before moving out to Falkirk and Airdrie. Hines. Well played. Here's English. McGlashan tearing into the centre. Isaac English goes on. Here's McGlashan. And it's English! Oh, and it could have, it was a shot, obviously, but it skewed away and could have provided a chance for George Shaw, who's retrieved the ball on the far side and earned Partick Thistle, persistent Partick Thistle, a corner. Well, Rangers looking more vulnerable than at any other time in the game. Gordon Ray is there. And he gets to it. He's a little disappointed with the outcome. Spencer. Here's Johnston. Houster wants it over the top, but he kept going forward, Peter Houster. And uh, dictated where you know, Johnston had to play it, really. There was no checking out to get a simple ball to feet. Simon, would you see Paddock Thistle as a realistic promotion challengers here? I think he's got to be one of the top three promotion challengers along with Dundee and... Uh, Hang on a minute. <laughs> we haven't written them off in the Skull Cup yet. And uh, they have pressurised and chased and harassed and Rangers at the moment are finding it hard going. Sammy Johnston, by simple 
honest endeavour and hard graft. Almost sporting a chance for himself there. Cardiff Thistle, I should tell you, are full-time. Of course, part-time teams in their division. And physically, they're going the distance well. And uh, football-wise, too. Irons. McLaughlin. long and hard about whether to use Isaac English from the start tonight and he might have wished that he had done with the impact that English's speed has brought and Gorm has to fist it away and Johnston again and there's Mo Johnston Ferguson Nisbet. Walter Smith has had Ali McCoy's ready for action for a good few minutes now. Still no sign of the substitution actually being completed. Ten minutes to go. a foul on Ferguson I think Walter Smith Martin was, uh, was thinking Rangers were going to stroll through the last 20 minutes of this game and in, in fact things have turned right around Party have taken over now for the last 10 minutes they've, they've done brilliantly and uh, they'll probably work a goal at the moment and I think one or two of his players thought they were into a stroll as well and uh, the real meat of the match has returned. And you're quite right. I mean, they've given Rangers some heart stopping moments. But it's still Paddock Thistle nil, Rangers two. And here comes Ali McCoy. Durant is the player going off. The Rangers fans aren't too happy about that. I don't think there's any great reflection on uh, Durant's performance. He's had some memorable moments in the game, particularly in creating the first goal. But as I said a couple of times tonight, Ian Durant still isn't exactly 100%. So McCoy is on. And Mo Johnston finds himself a midfield player for the remainder of the game. from the opposite view to the supporters in front of us. Nisbet, Duffy in the way. Glanced on by McLashen and English tried to get it back to him. to use up the time when they can. We're down to the last eight minutes. And of course, drawing the foul. Well, what will uh, Rangers come up with here? Ferguson finds Halstra, Spencer's in the centre, McCoy's is there as well, so is Nisbet. And that is a goal kick. And 
Andy Murdoch scampering to take the goal kick. Johnston. McCoyce took that well. Spencer up with him. McCoyce looks to add another to his considerable tally. McCoyce takes this well and he looks up, sees a chance in the top corner and goes, goes for it all the time. Bad luck with the finish. And down goes Johnston. Rangers' nerves could still jangle here if Parthic Thistle produce a goal from this position. Sammy Johnston has been a real handful for them in this phase of the game. Well, they might look for McLaughlin to the left of the wall here. McCoy's has seen it and uh, read it very well. Alan McCoy knew what was coming, almost better than Partick Thistle themselves. He's seen McLaughlin play before. And he was trying to loiter unnoticed in a position where the free kick could be rolled onto his left foot. But he was noticed by Ali McCoy. Good work from McGlashan. And it's just knocked away from Sammy Johnston. Astra using his confidence and composure to help the defending. Ferguson. Ian Ferguson would love to have a, a run back in the Rangers side now. He's uh, had the handicap of illness and injury since being signed from St Mirren, where, of course, he put his name in the uh, Scottish Cup history books with the winner at Hampden against Dundee United. Waving his teammates forward. And Rangers a bit slow to come out and uh, get to him. But they got to Farningham. And McCoy looking as fresh as he should be. Here's Ali McCoy. And that's McCall. It was a ball play just into the right area. Good skill here and great awareness with the chip to the far post. Very unlucky. Johnston coming in on the ball, I think. Yeah. More fuel for the fans who want him back in the starting lineup. First, Ali McCoy has a chatterbox but keeps his mouth shut when it matters when the manager makes his decisions and gets on with the job. Over Johnston. Handball, is it, by David Robertson? There's an offside in any case. Well, Paddock Thistle may not win the match tonight, but they have won the individual honours. Man of the match for the sponsors goes to Jim Duffy. <laughs> He's just heard the news himself announced over the public address here at Firhill. Three minutes to go. Well, I said earlier that it might be relaxing for Nigel Spackman to drop into the back line. How wrong can you be? He's had a very testing time. But that spell of pr pressure didn't produce the goal that could have really ruffled Rangers. It did show us that Pardic Thistle have got plenty of character and uh, no little skill. And they're well worth keeping an eye on in the... Scottish First Division over the remainder of the season. Halstrom. 
could have ricocheted anywhere. In fact, he's come back to Hauster again. Oh, Peter Hauster is an excellent example to uh, his British colleagues for application and uh, playing the full 90 minutes. Nice look from Spackman, despite the uh, pressure applied by Isaac English. Spencer. Another chance for Halstra to impress. It's a corner. 300,000 pounds from uh, Twente Enskede in Holland. He looks good value for money, Simon. Very good value. I mean, he's worked away all night. He's got great skill. He puts tremendous crosses in the box. You know, as a winger and a, a midfield player, I don't know what more you could ask for. He is in charge of this corner as well. His bet. Good awareness from Ferguson. A lot of Rangers players in the centre. Last shot in the Rangers locker. Yes, the 90 minutes are up. Cardiff Thistle can go off with their heads held high, but they're going out of the Skull Cup. Duffy taking the free kick and <laughs> trying to tell the referee that they should have another crack at it but the fashion was wrong footed and it is a Rangers throw Simon Stainrod, have you enjoyed the night and your final thoughts on it? Tremendous, tremendous game of football, great spirit from Partick Thistle I think if they, if they could play and maintain the spirit then they look good for the, the First Division Championship but Rangers, really, a class above them. Uh, they've, got, they've got the athleticism, they've got all the skill, players who score goals, and I think, you know, the, the Premier League shudders when they think about this team. They, they really are that much better than the rest, I think. Quite a compliment. Ferguson, still Thistle, as they were right at the first whistle. Tenacious in their tackling. George Smith is about to uh, bring a halt and Rangers, the Skull Cup specialists, are through to the quarterfinals. The second goal, the first in Rangers colours for David Robertson, who had a splendid match to add to Mo Johnston's opener, getting the better of a defence, soundly marshalled for the most part by Jim Duffy, who showed again what a fine performer he is and how good it is to see that he's overcome those injury problems of the past. Pardick will tell you that their priorities lie in winning that promotion that Simon Stainrod was talking about to the Premier Division and uh, at Firhill they've done themselves justice but it hasn't been enough. Coming up after the break we'll have more goals for you from last night's affair at Parkhead when Wraith Rovers 